What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hook Shots podcast. I am your host, Joe Cermelli, and if you're already saying, what is all that background noise? That is road noise, my friends, because we are on it. 3.16 in the morning, 95 southbound towards Philly. I am the the co-pilot of this mighty whip being driven by dear friend Mark Budosky. Good morning. Good morning. How art thou? I'm very well. I'm surprisingly awake for 3.15 in the morning, probably because I'm pretty excited. Good. Well, hands at 2 and 10. Okay. That's what we like to see. (laughs) And uh, here's what we're doing. All right. I'll clue you guys into this. Uh, I heard through the grapevine that all the the young kids with the podcast, they like to do, uh, they like to record during a fishing trip, like kind of live action. So... Uh, we are southbound to Washington, D.C. The date is January 16th, and um, this trip has not been planned for very long, but we are going catfishing on the mighty Potomac because uh, it's January 16th in the Northeast, and there's not f- all else to do. <laughs> so this is basically like a legit non-stage Mark and Joe are going absolutely crazy at home, um, the options right now at home are nil. Okay, I mean, if you don't count two and two and a half inches of ice and twelve inch perch. Okay, exactly. Uh, I do not count two and a half inches of ice. I need eight inches of ice. So January and February suck. Um, <laughs> it needs to be like bitter cold. Either be. Either everything has to be frozen solid enough where you can ice fish anywhere you want, or um, options are are just nil, right? Like, it's like, yeah, I can go pickerel fishing two days ago, but now everything's got skim ice. So we are in the lurch, and a lot of you understand the lurch, and it's it's like this time of year that I'm very jealous of of everybody who lives, like, along the, the Great Lakes where there's tributaries with steelhead and stuff that you can just run down the street and reef on them for a few hours. We don't have that here. Um, so these cannonball runs to D.C., it's kind of the best thing going. And this is not like uh, a stab in the dark in the sense that, you know, we're hoping for one bite. Winter time is actually like for blue cats. It's one of the few things that's on, right? Like this makes sense. It absolutely does. And actually the other species of catfish it's the exact opposite flatheads channel cats winter time gone but yeah blue cats they they feed I, I talked to all the good cat guys and they said best months of the year december january february exactly right so these fish still stay pretty active and big and, ones too is when you get the big ones yeah yeah i mean some of my uh virginia uh catfish buddies you know, February and January, that's their month. That's when they've caught their 80-pounders. Now, we don't, I don't have any kind of expectations like that. You know, this is basically just like we're dying to fish for something, man. We're dying to bend a rod. And we thought we would bring you um, along. And, uh, you know, it's kind of eerie out right now because there is basically nobody but us on all of 95. Well, there's that truck right there. There's one truck and us pulling this boat. And the funny thing is, if you're a follower of Hook Shots, our last video of 2018, our season finale, was me and Mark doing exactly this on the Potomac River in October, which feels like eons ago. It does. It that does. feels like it was years ago. I got a right? new truck, too. I know. You got a new truck. I know. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful truck. <laughs> uh, but the funny thing about that was we went in October thinking like, oh, man, that's going to be cool. Some nice catfishing in the nice crisp fall air bullshit it was like 85 (laughs) degrees we sweltered the entire time we were down there so all we wanted was some cool weather and it's like well now you got it i'm looking at the uh the dash here and it's reading 26 with uh a high of 40 today which is balmy compared to what it's been but that's winter fishing right you got to go with your windows you got to go when the, the the weather window gives you a shot we had a big snowstorm last weekend uh, today is a Wednesday. We got another one coming in, so we'll uh, we'll see. I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not fully dressed in all my garb yet because it's too long of a drive. Um, I have Cabela's Polar Tech. Do you you have Cabela's Polar Tech base layers, the fuzzy bear suit one. 
You know, I actually have a very old pair of uh, Under Armors that uh, have treated me very well. Yeah, okay. Cabela's not sponsoring this. No, no, no. There's no sponsors. No no, no sponsors. Dude, nobody... I'm just kidding. (laughs) Nobody gives us any money for hookshot shit, dude. Come on. This is a dead product, basically, in terms of financials. Um, No, but I have uh, this set of Cabela's Polar Tech uh, base layers, and my kid calls it daddy's fuzzy bear suit yeah mine, it, mine are furry too yeah, yeah it's a furry right it's like I look ridiculous with them on but every time she sees it she's like daddy you put your fuzzy bear suit on I'm like yes and daddy needs to leave the house immediately yeah. or he won't live to see you before yeah. you know what I mean that's like, why I have the air conditioning on right exactly because that shit is made for people who want to sit in a tree stand at the top of K2 <laughs> for hours if it's like 32.8 degrees you will fucking die so they feel nice on the skin too. Yeah, exactly. At some point, at some point in this podcast, it's going to be me like stripping <laughs> half naked in a parking lot to put the fuzzy bear suit on. But um, we're pumped and we're wide awake right now, even though I did not sleep. Did you sleep? Um, I slept an hour. Okay. I, pl- I planned on sleeping <laughs> three <laughs> hours, but my daughter wanted to hang out with me. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're about on par. Um, because I'll tell you, man, if, if there's any fishing trip where I have to be awake before, say, 4 o'clock in the morning, it means I have to try and go to bed earlier than I normally do, which is like 12, 12.30. And I don't know about you, but I get so excited that what inevitably happens is I'll try and figure out a way to get in bed at like 9.30 and lay down and I go, all right, sweet. If I fall asleep right now, I will get four solid hours and an hour later I'm like I fall asleep <laughs> right now I will get and at some point it just evolves and you know what hell f- it I don't need <laughs> f- sleep I am a I am a machine mm-hmm. so um we'll, we'll see as this day goes on how we uh devolve into uh shades of icicle death we'll see what happens now obviously we're not going to record the entire time we're going to do this in, in drips and drabs um, but I am happy to report, you know, one of the hardest things about this catfishing in the winter is bait, right? You always yeah. want fresh bait. And um, that's a struggle. I mean, we were both calling people who said they had freezers full of American shad from the spring. Nobody had any. So you always want preferably native fish in the river that you're fishing and fresh as possible. And, um, you know, sometimes... This time of year, because I've, I've done this before, you just have to devolve into, um, a, you know, the Asian market. Like, that's where you have to go. And you're like, all right, this is what we got. Give me two tilapia, one pup for fish, and I'll take five of those wild-caught juvenile muskies. <laughs> <laughs> and, look, and look, this is the thing. All Asian marts are not created equally. This but is true. If you go to the Asian mart... In Edison, the H Mart, it is like a fucking bait bonanza. And shit you not, I found fresh, not previously frozen shad. Who the hell eats shad? Okay, okay well, let's forget who eats it. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you texted me a picture on your phone, and, and it just said, holy shit. And I was like... <laughs> Dude, are they American shad? <laughs> are they American shad or hickory I, shad? I don't what know. I, have, I don't know, actually. Um, they look like American shad. I mean, dude. If they, they smell like shit. If they got American shad in the H Mart this time of year, I don't really want to know nothing about where they came from or what they're doing there. Because well, they sell live blackfish. Dude. I know <laughs> that they sell live blackfish. That they sell, they sell, I feel so bad. They're swimming in the tank, that one lone guy. And they sell... Uh, 20 inch straight bass too. I know 20 inch straight <laughs> bass that's on the total up and up but, but you know what it's you, you want to report them but it's like what if I need catfish bait <laughs> in January you know anyway so we're gonna uh, we're gonna check in periodically as we go play by play throughout the day hopefully stick some catasauruses and I think we need we need some kind of sound effect to like designate when times passed. Like what should what should we use? Any thoughts on that? Coming out like time is past? Like, yeah, like we need some kind of sound effect to let the people know that like it's a new take. Time has passed within the podcast. How about a meow? A me- <laughs> <laughs> meow? <laughs> 
Um, okay. <laughs> uh, if I can't find a meow, maybe, I don't know. We'll go with, uh, maybe the from Duck Hunt. That works. All right. So every time you hear this. Meow. It me- <laughs> every time. <laughs> every time you hear this, you know, time has passed. Uh, I'd just like to point out for reference that we are driving by Lincoln Financial Field here in uh, Philadelphia. Look at it all lit up, Eagles green. You a football fan? A little bit. Uh, I'm enough of a football fan to not like the Eagles. Okay, I don't give a shit. quiet there. I don't give a shit about football, so I just wanted to say as we drive by, who dat not winning the Super Bowl (laughs) again this year? Cry, Eagles, cry. (laughs) So, question, have you ever been so excited about a fishing trip that you leave way too freaking early? Yes. (laughs) That's where we are right now, burning through tiny Delaware and uh, well into Maryland. Just stopped at a Royal Farms, okay? Don't have Royal Farms where we live, a little north of here in PA and NJ. That is a... I don't know know where the franchise actually exists, but... um, I th- First of all, why is it that on a normal day you can get up at a reasonable hour and like not be hungry until 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, but when you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, you are just f***ing starving by 4? Agreed. Agreed. It, it's, I'll be eating my lunch by 7. <laughs> Every time I go out on a fishing trip, People are like, why did you bring five sandwiches? And it's like, because I'm going to eat four of them before nine o'clock in the morning, dude. That's just how it works. Anyway, uh, quick commentary on Royal Farms. This is only the second time I've ever been to a Royal Farm. So if you live in Royal Farms territory, let's talk about a couple things. Clearly, this is a fried chicken joint. That is what it is famous for, and that is why the chicken, egg, and cheese biscuit breakfast sandwich is so delectable. However, I have um, I've strayed, I've wandered off the path of righteousness, and I just ordered myself the Italian sub from the Royal Farms, and I should have backed out of that one when the only condiment options were mayonnaise, Ooh. ketchup, or nacho oh. cheese. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like Marilyn, is that what you put on an Italian sandwich? Nacho cheese? <laughs> and then you get to the spice thing, like, you know, it's like salt. It's like, do you want salt and pepper and then a whole bunch of weird, like, dill pickle powder, sour cream and onion powder? And uh, onions, oddly, were not one of the vegetable options. It's, that is this. You know what, Joe? I'm sorry. I'm trying to listen to you, but I uh, I have to change the subject. Can I change the subject for a minute? Go ahead. Why the f*** is there Baltimore, D.C. traffic at 5.30 in the morning? We're, we're in traffic. Yeah, I know. And, yeah, well, the closer we get, the... Uh the better the grind gets, the harder the grind gets. I, you know, it's like you, you, I expected, our, you expected to miss this entirely? Not entirely, but I mean, it's it's five thirty. You know, this is why we leave her, and I could actually just see our our estimated time of arrival moving further and further and further back. And, who, uh, dude, who gives a shit? The sun's not coming up for another three hours, dude. I this is like goddamn. Campus. This is like eternal darkness in Alaska <laughs> here, and you aren't even smart enough to get yourself a chicken, egg, and cheese biscuit. So that you could suffer through this traffic in greasy deliciousness that will bite me later. Perhaps harder than the poor choice of a Royal Farms Italian sandwich. All right, so this is real talk here. We are at Columbia Island Marina. I spared you guys the me getting dressed because who cares? But now I'm all in my warm fuzzies and uh, I'm pretty comfortable. Though I did just move a bow in the public restroom here, which I don't think anybody's been in since like November and that was the coldest toilet seat that my ass cheeks ever touched like I froze (laughs) all the fat in my ass which could be a good thing I might be like a pants size uh smaller people pay a lot of money for that so I'm told Mark's here tying a sheep shank (laughs) how does an anchor roll like how does a rope even get like this I I don't know I don't know it's pretty bad yep Yep, he's uh, so. 
the the uh, the elephant in the room though here <laughs> that we've yet to address. Mark had the wherewithal to call ahead to make sure the ramp was open this time of year. It is, but it's frozen. There's about uh, there's snow, ice covering the launch. So Mark is here, did the old uh, toe tap test, and says that this ice isn't thick enough to worry about. And we're just going to Titanic right through this shit in a 14 foot aluminum boat. I mean, DC just got racked with a big snowstorm last weekend. There's another one coming this weekend, and like. Mm-hmm. Windows in the winter for a lot of for a lot of things are everything, right? Uh, this is the window. Today is the day. Light winds, warm temps. It's now or never. So In all fairness, I did assume that at some point in the winter this entire harbor would freeze. I just didn't think today was gonna be the day. Right. Well, it's been in the twenties for like a week, so we probably we should have given this a little bit more thought. I apologize for the sound of Boeing 747s roaring out overhead, but you're going to hear it all day, man. Reagan Airport is right over yonder. That right there is the sounds of America. That is the sound of Washington, D.C., or more accurately, the people leaving it. So we're going to don the uh, the life jackets and, uh, I don't our, know. Our smiling faces. Our smiling fa- a shovel or some shit, and... Uh, <laughs> We're going to see if we can't plow our way through here. I figure once we get through this hurdle, uh, we should be okay. Onward and upward. All right, I am watching Mark back this rig down right now <laughs> on a ramp that's a sheer sheet of ice that I literally watched him dump, spill, and slide down when we first got here. Here goes nothing. Now we're never. Oh, can you hear that ice cracking, kids? This dock is frozen as shit. What do you think, dude? What, What's ca- up? Careful, what do you think? Fine, I think we're fine. Ooh. Dude, Woo! dude. <laughs> holy shit. What's the plan here? You know what, I should probably back it in a little more first. Yeah, let me back a little more first. Okay. So crunchy. That's breaking. Oh. Hey. Oh. Ay. All right, well, it broke it right there. What's up? It broke it right there, dude. Oh, Just, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Just watch oh. your ass getting down to it. <laughs> Gretzky. Oh, my God. We should be shooting a video, not doing a podcast. Uh, you're absolutely right. Because audio is not going to do this shit show full justice. Woo! Oh, <laughs> oh my God, dude, grab the door. Holy crap, he just almost bit it again. Just full on slide straight into the icy depths. Holy shit. All right, well, we're off the trailer. Uh, we're off the trailer. Oh my god, she turned right over. She did. Look at that. Look at that. Am I on? Yeah, you're on. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Over the motor? Over the motor. Okay. It's because it's a two-stroke. It's really quiet. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Um, okay. Uh, here we go. What's the speed limit in here? I don't know what the speed limit is in here. Why? What are you thinking? Did you going to open her wide up and just make some snow cones? All right, so we are baited up and set. Four rods. I can hear you pissing. Yes. <laughs> That's the sound of hot urine on a bitter cold day. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so we are baited up with our Asian Market Hickory Shad, four rod spread. And that was a pretty event, uh, uneventful ride up after all that ice breakage. And we're actually sitting north of D.C. proper right now. And up in this neck of the woods, there's woods, uh, go figure, on either side of you. And I got to say, uh, as, as cold as it is this morning, not to get all 
you know, nature poetic, but it is actually really beautiful up here. You know, the water's a nice color, snow on either side in the woods here, little curls of steam coming off of the Potomac. And uh, we got a 14 foot aluminum boat here. It's probably worth 600 bucks and it's got $7,000 worth of electronics on it. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, according to Mark, his uh, downside up backwards scan says we're sitting on some cats. So (laughs) we'll see uh, what happens here. But, you know, it was it was really bizarre because the last time we were here, it was so warm out, even though it was October, like, you know, the whole river was just loaded with people on SUPs and kayaking and other boats running around. And I, I got to admit, it's like it's kind of eerie today because we are the only people on this river. And coming up through the center of town, like puttering through the center of town, you know, every road around here is just bumper to bumper traffic because like that's what D.C. is, is traffic. And we must look just like two crazy people. And there, there, there is so much, there's so much shit on this boat uh, that there's barely room for our legs. What are you doing on your phone? What if that rod goes off? What are you going to do with that phone? I'm going to throw it in the water. <laughs> Sorry. Who are you texting at this hour? Believe it or not, I had a, uh, a patient like write me this, like, page long email last night about you know thanking me and uh i haven't responded to him yet so he probably thinks like yeah this guy's a fucking asshole oh. so i just want to let him know that i uh, i see it and i'm gonna read it later so, so right yeah okay <laughs> um interesting side note when mark says patient he is actually um, a plastic surgeon that only does boob jobs male or female yes yes Uh, so that's the scene right and hopefully we'll fire up audio quick enough if something goes down Um, you know it's oddly trickier to do a podcast like this on location than just quickly fire up a video camera so we're, we're learning together I'm learning here and you are learning with us but so far um if you could put yourself here freezing but sunny and beautiful snow Steamy water, four rods, just waiting for one to bend. And uh, the electronics hint that at some point they will. Although in my experience with winter cats, and I'm not saying we need to change plans, but my experience has been with other guides that when the water's cold, even though they eat, um, if they don't eat quick, pack your shit and move to somewhere else. So I'm the anchor man. And that anchor rope is really, really cold. It's wet on the hand region. It's numbing to the palm region. So uh, I want to try and minimize the amount of times we have to do that. So hopefully uh, the the next chapter here, when you hear from me again, it will be me saying that uh, we are tight. We are tight. And um, maybe then, you know, Mark will actually have something to stay instead of, Oh, I'm sorry. I, Dickering I, around. On, it's a I, conversation. Really it's like me and you here together. Oh, I'll, you know what? This is my first podcast. You know, I'm, uh, I'm kind of new at this, and uh, it's my first time. All right. Well, we're going to have a stern <laughs> talking to as soon as I stop recording here. I'm sorry, here. man. I am sorry. Ooh, Mark's trying to get fancy here. He just busted out some bunker oil to spray down his bait, but it's all freezing cold and... <laughs> coagulated and it's shooting out of the damn spray gun in ropes son all right well we got some we got some stank on that one five rods now five rods five rods uh i don't know it's been 15 minutes uh all is quiet on the western front you know i'm no catfish pro right but it's having fished here before and having blue catfish in other places it's like you just come to expect the bite when you're in a good hole right away like you expect to get bit in less than five minutes as a catfish pro i um (laughs) i uh, i agree with joe the problem with that is theoretically if they've gone shallow it's like you know you could you could pick a hole right you know where the hole is and that's easy to target but if you go shallow where the hell do you go so uh 
we're gonna we might have to do some experimentation today. All right, so we're bit. Getting there. Back corner just got a little bejiggled. So we just slid both of them. Both the back corners are getting rocked. Watch the other corner. Watch the other corner. We just slid about a hundred yards downstream of where we were. Five minutes soak and we got life. And any life in January is good. Mark is poised on the back of this boat. None of my rides are getting touched, just the two back corners, which that's your station, bro. And you were like poised like a lynx. Dude, I'm Cheetah. ready. I'm like, a, to I'm like a tiger ready to pounce on one of these rods. So we're, we're getting knocked, but we need to see one absolutely bend in half. That is the goal. It's called the bendo. Look at him. He's, in the words of my old friend Kevin Jarnigan, he's just, he's just playing a little slap and tickle with you right now. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Maybe Maybe because it's colder. Maybe he's got to get a little mouth feel yeah. before he commits. You know, what? I think he might actually be on. I'm not touching this thing until it's... it's oh, you think he's actually on there? I think he might be, but I'm not, I'm not doing shit until I see the bendo. Which one, the right or the left? The right. Yeah. See? You see what I'm saying, yep. man? Yep, he has not left that one alone. I don't know, dude. That's either a little fish or a big and playing. But that's life. It's life. It's a big one. He's probably ready to shit it out already. By the same token, though, how many trips have you been on where some guy or somebody's like, I don't know, I mean, a lot of life here. A lot of life. And it doesn't equate <laughs> to Dick Diddley. Come on. All right, maybe he's, maybe he's microphone shy. So we'll shut down on him, let him do his thing, and fire back up, and we're both screaming like a bunch of idiots. See that? Swimming upstream. You think he's swimming upstream? I know he's swimming upstream. See, look at the line. Well, jack his ass, son. Crank down on him. He's on there, dude. I don't know if it's a big one, but he's on there. Oh, no. What the f***? Off? No, man. What the f***? <laughs> what the f*** is that shit? All right, whiff number one. But now your other rod's going. Which one? I think your long rod just got ticked. Or it's wishful thinking on my part. Now you might have just jostled that when you got us a little caddy wampus in there oh, wait, cranking on a whole bunch of nothing. I'm tangled. All right, that's a swing and a miss. That's a sign of life, guys. It's always good to see a sign of life. Action on JC's side of the boat. It's just a tap right now, boys and girls. Long. Bend that shit in half. Bend it. Bet, oh, c oh, come on. Oh, no, not yet, not, not yet, not yet. I'm not, shut up. <laughs> Do you tell me my business, devil woman? I'm the catfish woman? pro here. Yeah, you're the catfish pro? Yeah. I'll f*** your shit up. What the, is it doing jumping jacks down there? I don't know, dude. These bites are very strange. Very strange. He looked like he wanted to bend that in half. Maybe they're, it's must Although the catfish pro also told me to put on like a whole half a shad. I wish he'd just bite the damn thing and bend it in half so we could catch one because... Uh, up until this point, I got to be honest, I'm not sure a, uh, a, a live action podcast of catfishing is the most exciting thing I've ever done. I expect you guys at the end of this, no matter what the outcome, to be like, yeah, dude, do more of that, or this sucked. So, come on, catfish. Come on, what the f My language. Your language is delicious. Do you bleep this stuff, or? Oh, I'll bleep the shit out of it. Yeah. Wow, that was strange, man. That was like... That was like tiny little little knocks, yeah. and then he, uh, come on, that's he'll, it. He'll be, he's done, he's there. It's only going to be a 12 and a half pounder, though. I know. See, like you, I want to believe that he's actually on there. That's it, that's yeah. it. Come on, come on. Like, what the hell is going on? What is, what exactly? He looks like he's about to rock it, and then it pops back up. I mean, If he's on there, dude, that circle hook's going to be coming right out his asshole. Oh, 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 we got another, uh, uh, uh. Got another, another slap and tickle in the back over here. Slap and tickle in the rear. Come on, come on, come on. Take it down and keep going that direction. Oh, oh, that's the head of, oh man, we're just getting. I know, all of a sudden we got, we got three rods going here. Bumping. None of them seem to be the right bite. 
Oh my God, dude, I want to try this fish so bad. I swear to God, he's there. Take a, I think he's there too. Take a crank, just one. I'm actually, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. No, don't tell me what to do. I really want to believe that fish is on there. He's on there. He's on there. We're in. Oh shit. Oh, ho, 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 ho. good one. I it could be, yeah. He was just sitting there sucking on it. Oh, ho, ho. Live action. That's a good fish. I think it's a good fish, dude. I really think it's a good fish. Or a decent fish, anyway. Or one that makes me happy that we came down here. And he is off. Oh. He is off. No. Yep. Oh. He is gone. F that is not how we wanted to start that. Oh, dude, look. The freaking circle hook spun inside the bait. Shit. Not a good start. He was there, too, and he had weight. So. You know, the, the vibrator, though. Look at that. Full action on the vibrator. Yeah, you got your little well, rotating, rattling nutsack on here. I don't know how I feel about it. Well, right now, I don't feel good. Uh, got the only good bite so far. I mean, feel free to take it off. This is, uh, you know. Ah, uh, that is a bastard. Okay. All right, so that was definitely a really disappointing, tough break. That's not how we wanted to get things rolling. Uh, that felt like a heavy fish for the first bunch of cranks there and then just was gone. Now, to analyze that, I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened there. Uh, it's a giant circle hook, giant bait, and that hook was spun around in that bait. So I don't know if that was a little fish playing around or what, but it speaks to, like, you ever feel like, um, you ever feel like a lot of people like look at cut baiting as just like really dumbed down stuff, but there's yeah. so much minutia in yeah. even that. You know what I mean? Like I cringe when I see somebody send a live bunker out and there's like one scale on the point of the hook from running it through. And yeah. like that's like the littlest, stupidest junk. I remember gar fishing with Dawson Hefner, which you should do one of I these days. To. I know it's you do. It's on my, um, my to-do list. I know, I know. Like he removes all the scales on his carp chunks where the hooks go through just to make it pull out that much faster. Like when the fish, when you, you would have set the hook so it tears through quicker. So that was just some bizarro combo. And uh, hopefully that's not setting up how this day is gonna go. Because we literally went from three rods dancing and one fish on to nothing. Now I'm just watching Mark, eat a sandwich. Good sandwich, though. I know. I got that whatever that is from Royal Farms that I'm not looking forward to. Uh, and I'm just trying to feel the tip of my feet. So that's where we're at. So this is the age-old fishing question, is it not, right? So we are in a spot that is a high-level confidence spot. We caught all our fish here. They're in our video shoot in October. Mark's caught a lot of fish here to 51 pounds. And we are marking fish like crazy right so there's a ton of shad and a ton of catfish under us and so far we've had like one kind of sort of weirdo heavy fish loss yeah. and a whole bunch of little knocks now <laughs> what do you do <laughs> what do you do? what do we do we go rogue and start poking around in the unknown or do you stay here with all the catfish on the screen and uh the bait on screen Marcus. Mark's not feeling this. See, I'm not feeling this. I just don't want to pull the anchor. No. Because <laughs> we, we dropped back a little bit more and now we have like yeah. 300 feet of road out that I'm going to have to uh, get in. Uh, no, but kidding aside, it's like um, you have ideas of this spot and that spot. A lot of them are pretty far downstream of where we are. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Let's think about it some more. As soon as you move that box, I'm going to have you pull out the map. Because <laughs> I have stuff marked on the map. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't know. And it's not too far. That bridge is one of the spots on my map. And right. the Kennedy Center. Right, right. Well, now you're giving away. Now you're just telling, all, you're spilling all the beans. Oh, yeah. Not, no, that's, you know, where we're going to go for lunch. Uh, 
It's like a couple of knocks in January is a couple of knocks in January. You know, because, how, dude, how often do these fish come through in, in waves? Mm-hmm. It seems like year-round. Is that not the case? I've never fished in January. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's better to go on the hunt. But, dude, you know, you know, like, when you're fishing when it's cold and you just get very comfortable, like, in the cold? Yeah. It's like... Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm it's... fairly warm right now. I'm enjoying a bag of... Uh, Duke's, Duke's original <laughs> snossages. Um, we got to at least try, man. I'm with you. I, you we just can't. We just can, don't. You, you can't I'm, sit here for hours. Yeah. On end in one spot. It's just so juicy. We're All not. Right. We're not taking a shot in the dark. And our our, our run is about five minutes. Not even. So. All right. You're the captain. All right. So I think it's only fair that we inform you guys. Uh, what just happened. So we collectively made the decision that the smart thing to do would be to move. So we ran all the way down river a few clicks, right? Uh, we scoped a few spots and and we ended up uh, right exactly <laughs> back in the spot that we had left. And here's why I think this is interesting, okay? Because Mark has got some super schnazzy electronics <laughs> on this boat, right? The kind that lets you see a pimple on a blue cat's ace, right? But we just ran around for 20 minutes, and he did not see anything he liked, which begs the question, okay? And I think this is a fair question. Does, does there come a point when electronics, like, trumps, like, gut instinct a little bit? I think so. I definitely think so. I mean... Do you even know what I asked? Yeah, if, when elect- if electronics trump gut instinct. So you... I'm, I'm, my, the point that I'm trying to make, dude, is you, on this trip, are not stopping unless you see exactly the pile of fish you want on the bottom. Right? Not, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely want to see some life. I want to see, uh, I want to see some fish down there, or at least some bait. Okay. Uh, here's a prime example of why, okay? And I, for the record, I'm not harping on this spot, but I'm just making a point. Last February, I caught a 32-pounder on a spot that we just scoped on a whim, on foot, because it looked juicy. Like, it just looked right, so we soaked a bait there and uh, caught that fish and a bunch of others in the teens based on looks alone, yet we go cruise through that spot with the fancy... Uh, pimple scope <laughs> and you're like nah don't see anything I like here so I'm just making the point that like I, I is it are you becoming that guy that's like you know he can see that pimple but if he doesn't see that pimple he's just <laughs> not ever gonna you know try because maybe it just you know look the gut says so yeah I mean you know I just I want to see something I just I want to see something I mean if, if we're going through a spot and I don't mark any bait and I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I told there were spots down there that I definitely would have set up on. Um, there were, but I wanted to exhaust this first because this has been our, our honey hole. And I feel like I saw, you know, more, more fish in one spot down here. Yeah. And look, I'm not sad about it. Right. Because we decided we should go poke around but by the same token, I, I don't know, I was really stuck on that, like, well, we got some knocks here, there's something going on here. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not unhappy, I just I just found the whole thing funny. Yeah. We just did 25 minutes worth of donuts yeah. uh, with Mark's face glued to a screen, <laughs> and then came right back to where we were. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's hopefully that was the right move, and the, uh, the pimple scope has us on him this yeah. time. Like, you know, we there's definitely some stuff down there we can fish. There was some stuff in 25 feet of water. But until we completely exhaust this, I'm going to say let's let's wait. We got to go back down that way anyway. All right, let's exhaust the shit out of it. Okay. Are you peeing again, dude? Oh, I thought you had the mic off. No. Oh, I thought you were done, man. I'm oh sorry. Oh, my God, dude. Give me a second. <laughs> So I'll listen to the shake. <laughs> How many times today am I going to inadvertently record you taking a whiz? 
You can make a whole podcast out of that. Mm. <laughs> All right. Where were we? Uh, random thought, and this is a this is a, a fat guy, large American man problem. Who is going to come out with a set of base layers, okay, uh-huh. that stay on a large person where they're supposed to, as opposed to riding up under mm. your man boobs and fitting like a cut off racing t shirt on a Bud Light girl? Yeah, I can see where that might be a little uncomfortable. I like that that fleece, by the way. It's right on. Yeah, thank you. It's yeah. like luckily you can only see the top of it. Uh, uh, f- uh, under my bibs because like the rest of it is right there man it's just like right below the bib region and the effort I'd have to go through to untuck and like pull everything down yeah just not into it right now I hear you alright we've been watching a fish knock around Mark's rod that's got a full bunker head on it and bunker oil and bunker oil it's been knock. It's been- it has been knocking at this line for 10 minutes now yeah but it just will not take the bait. It will, <laughs> <laughs> it will not just like do what it's supposed to do and hoover that and go. I don't know, dude. I'm starting to question whether he's just sitting on it right now. He might be on. There, there's just enough bend in that rod that I'm starting to question whether he's not just laying on it. Because there's also a very distinct possibility that in this cold water, I don't know, they're not just going to take off and bow up the way they normally do. I think he's moving with it. Like, I think he's going that way. Yeah. I, like, I could see your line moving, and I'm not... I'm Should not, I? Ah, oh, God, I know, I know. I, I, I want everything in my bones and my plums says wind down on them, but everything in the other plum says just let it go, man. Now, mind you, there's five rods out. They all have nice, meaty chunks on them, soft chunks. The only rod getting touched is the one with the whole giant head. This is the one. Come on, dude, he's there. F***ing crank his ass. Is he, though? You don't think so? No. No? No. Okay, my mistake. Uh, don't listen to me. Quick update. Uh, we're giving up on the money hole. It's just, we're just getting nothing but these little doinky dookie taps uh, with no commitment. So we're going to start working our way down river here. So uh, we've slid. We've, we've marked some fish on the ultra side, upside down scan. So I think we're just going to do some spot hopping here. And let me tell you. Um, you know, it's like salami is salami. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care about high quality cold cuts, but the fucking bread, man. Like, the fucking bread is what makes an Italian. Yeah. And Royal Farms it has that the best was, bread that, you've ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> that was the shittiest oversized <laughs> hot dog roll. Oh, man. I've ever put in my mouth. Okay, I'll give you a pass on the bland tomatoes. Yeah, but uh, that's why they got that mayo and ketchup, man. You that's why. Spice it that's up. why the auto options, if you select Italian, are <laughs> would you like ketchup, mayo, or, or nacho peanut butter, or nacho, <laughs> <laughs> nacho cheese? Um. Anyway, listen. Look, there's a lot of my own boogers on my gloves. A little bit of bait juice, not a stitch of cat slime. And uh, the day's wasting. It's a luncheon time, man. It's a five after one. And there just ain't a whole lot of daylight this time of year. Now is there. Boop. I hit record just because it's my goal to get you peeing every time you pee. <laughs> that should be like your transition noise. <laughs> it's like a compilation, dude. You know, some people pay a lot of money for audio like that. Here's a quick lament, right? Just because a lot of people over the years have said like, hey, JC, I want to do what you do. And my answer to that um, snarkily is often, oh, you mean you want to screw up every fishing trip you go on by incorporating media content that has to be got? Because this was supposed to be a Mark and Joe fun day. I'm the one 
that had to muck things up <laughs> and say, dude, let's record a podcast the whole time that we're out there. Um, and this was kind of like an experiment on my part, too, to see if just recording your voice was enough to make everything shit to bed as it is with video cameras. <laughs> and so far, that's proving to be uh, 100% the case. So just remember that. If you want to shoot videos and things like that of your fishing, uh, be prepared for a lot of your fishing to totally suck. We have just changed spots again, sliding down a river. Uh, yeah, the, wind, the wind is kicking up, but I mean, I don't know what's going on here because we just marked a stunner pile of fish, just a stunner pile of fish. Uh, that was the best stuff we've seen all day. E exactly. Best stuff we've seen all day, yet, uh, man, they're just not, they're just not wanting to do it here. And, you know, the bitch about winter fishing, no matter where you're doing it, is, um, aside from being cold, right, it's like you just don't have the daylight. And it, it hits a point much earlier in the day in the winter when you're like, uh, we really don't have that much time left. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel really tired. And the Royal Farms Italian is rumbling in the gut. <laughs> and it would be really, really nice. Really I know, nice. I know your game. You just want to go back to Royal Farms. <laughs> Get me some fried chicken. Um, it would just be nice. You know, wouldn't it be nice... Wouldn't it be nice if uh, you, you try and do this stuff to stop yourself from going crazy at home and you just end up going crazy you're here? It would be nice. <laughs> yeah. But we're, we're definitely hitting that, like, turn in the day where we've hit enough spots, seen enough marks to come to that realization that uh, these blue cats, which I think is kind of rare... Just straight up might not be chewing it out. Like, you know how you look for a yeah. billion stupid answers and like you compare and contrast everything to past trips and past experiences. And sometimes it's like they just they just aren't they just don't want to eat today. Um, and I think that's where we are. I'm kind of thinking, yeah. not to be a pessimist, but I'm kind of thinking that's where we are. You know, I thought these fish were supposed to be garbage cans. They're there. You put some meat in the water and they eat it. You know, kind of like. Me with pizza. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Uh, not tonight it won't be you with pizza because we are squarely outside the pizza triangle, my friend. Yeah. You're pizza right. Pizza triangle does not extend as far south as uh, Washington, so I'm just going to go right ahead and say that um, the, the, the quick stop Italian, Italian subs in Maryland suck, <laughs> and uh, y'all don't know pizza, so we're going to have to figure something else out later. Uh, but but not now, because right now we're focused. Kind of. Laser focused. Well, dude, that's the problem with, with catfishing. I, I almost feel like the, the, that's a bite. the bad times... That's a bite. Oh, that's a hit. That's a hit. Come on. That... That was a hit. Fuck, man. That rod just got rocked, dude. I know. And this is what the few hits that we've gotten today have been doing. It's like one shot and gone. And that's so atypical of catfish with that vacuum cleaner mouth. Just, and, um, just, and, you know, these... That's a fish. That's a fish. That's a fish. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're in. You in? Oh, you! Oh my what? god! Oh my god! Well, we gotta stay here for a couple more minutes, right? Yeah, dude. Well, that was a real run. That was a. Oh my god! This is just gonna be that day, isn't it? This is just gonna be that day. I, dude, I think we can pull a fish out of here. We got tone. Come on, Mark, make something happen, please. What the f man? What the f happened? Would he stop running it? Yeah. Oh my God. What I the think, dude, the wind is kicking up, and now we're swinging. 
And I just feel like now we're starting to get false positives here. No, that was a f***ing run, dude. No f***ing doubt about that. It was a run. All right. Well, that makes one of our minds. <laughs> I'm just letting that f***ing run, dude. Yeah. Goes, goes. You're, you're, you're taking a leak, and now we're getting hits. He can go past that f***ing bridge. And then I'll f***ing give him some... Whatever's banging on mine right now looks like some like white perch yeah. or something. Just trying to nibble it off that giant 10 aught circle hook. Still just not taking it though, you know? Yeah, this bite right here was getting a little better. It was like getting stronger. Yeah. But still, man, like blue cats don't mess around. Yeah. Even small ones don't mess around this much. I think you set us up. I think your fancy sonar put us right on a pile of finless browns. <laughs> you know what they could be, too? What? Little stripers. They could be little stripers wintering up here. That's not outside the realm. And if that's the case, they ain't getting none of these hooks. Yeah. Yeah, dude. This is, this is baby stripers or something. I think so. Because both of our rods are going nuts. Whatever's down there is just picking this shiz up and dropping it. And it ain't a catfish. Dude, I mean, look at the teeny tiny... Look look at this giant hunk of yeah. hickory shad just, like, pecked apart by a puffer fish or something. Now, I'm going to scream here, and I have absolutely no idea if you can hear me over the engine. But just so we're on the same page with where this day has gone, uh, in an act of desperation which has turned to mild stupidity. We have ventured south of DC to where the Potomac gets really freaking wide and choppy, and we probably shouldn't be on it right now in the boat that we are on, and we are getting just fucking drenched. I mean, just soaked. All this, mind you, to find the bailout warm water outflow, because that, kids, is where dreams are made and broken when all else has failed. You find the stream of hot pee pee water. I have no idea if the last piece of audio that I tried to record uh, came out or not, but that's the sound of us crashing into the ice that is still here on the return to the ramp. And um, I'm looking at Mark, who I cannot give a wireless mic to right now, because the dude is literally drenched in 36-degree <laughs> water. Uh, like, my nerves are shot, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I can't even. Um, look, suffice it to say that this is... Uh, I'm going to explain what happened, but... This trip went quickly from, hey, you know, we got off the couch, we got out, you know, fishing's fishing, uh, we didn't catch any cats, to this just got really f***ing stupid real fast. Because you, have to, you had to push it, we had to push it, we had to push it, we had to push it. And now, um, in the interest of not getting hypothermia and getting this boat back on the trailer safely... Just just give us a minute to, to organize ourselves and our thoughts. Could you do us that kindness? And then um, we'll explain, okay? All right, so after, uh, I don't know, 40 minutes of boat wrap-up and taking off just like sopping wet sweatshirts and... Uh, even though I was wearing Gore-Tex, like that, that is how wet we got. And, and look, here's the, here's the bottom line. All right, I've actually uh, put this in written word before. Like, if you don't find yourself in enough situations where you're going, how? Like, why did I put myself in this situation in fishing? Like, you don't get out enough. Right? <laughs> like, you you, yeah. know, you don't get out enough. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, truthfully speaking, right? You know, now that we're in the safety of the car. Um, 
I don't know. I'm getting too old for those situations. <laughs> and we just found ourselves. You know, like, it was. I'm 40, it, man, and I'm cool with this. <laughs> Yeah, you weren't cool with it. So look, here's what happened. <laughs> All right, we were in a spot. We were marking a bunch of fish. We were getting the same little little horse crap bites that we've been getting all day. Slap and tickle. Slap and tickle. They're playing slap and tickle now. Everybody out there, right, or at least a lot of you out there, um, you know about some some hot water discharge fishing, okay? Coal plant, power plant, nuke plant. Uh, sewage plant, whatever you got, whatever you got going on, okay, they exist all over the place, and uh, in a lot of places, that's your bailout in the yeah. winter. It's like when all else fails, you go to the hot water discharge, which I I don't know, I think is lame. Like it's like it's not where you go first, yeah. but um, it's the last resort. It's the last resort, and we were at last resort stage. That much is true. It was like we got time to bust one more move before the sun starts a setting. Um, and there, there, there's, there's a sewage plant down here. Um, poo water. <laughs> it actually looked like poo water. It, it looked like poo water for the brief 30 seconds that I got to see it. Yeah. But we'll, 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 so the thing is you got to understand about the, the Potomac, um, where it comes through downtown DC, it's pretty narrow. I mean, it's deep, yeah. but like it's pretty neck down, right? It's pretty narrow. As soon as you get south of the city, south of the bridges, man, that river widens out. I mean, it's, it turns into a big piece of water uh, pretty fast. And it's it's not untraversable in a 14-foot sea nymph, you know, in uh, July. But we went for it, man. Mark busted out his maps and put on his <laughs> ski goggles I love and, those ski goggles. And with it, <laughs> within like 30 seconds of getting under the bridges to where the Potomac widens out, it was a total like, we shouldn't have did this, man. Yeah. Like the wind kicked up on us and it was choppy and that water is 36 degrees. Yeah. But I think also, I think everybody knows the point of no return. Yeah. Like, dude, everybody hits the point of no return. We've gone too far to go back at three this quarters point. of the way we're three quarters of the way like I can, you can see it you can see the poo water you could smell the poo water in the, the warm creek. water the quote unquote warm the water quote unquote warm water so you know we had the wind at our at our at our at our at our stern going down so it was like ah it's a little it's a little spray but like you know whatever we got the, we got the gear on and and then we get down to the poo water and the poo water today was only one degree warmer. 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.1, to be fair. To be fair. It's also good you know, to mention that, ironically, where the Potomac comes from through D.C. and is narrow, it averages between 15 and 25 feet. So, But when you get towards the southern part and the river opens up it's now four to six feet right. so it even creates more chop so. right so yeah so it's shallower therefore choppier and the wind kicked and my favorite part of the ride down was when we stopped in the middle <laughs> in the middle of the, right in the middle of the goddamn potomac and i said what are you doing and mark said you know before we keep going down to the poo water i should probably check sh and make sure we got enough gas to get back and I, I knew we did, but you can never be too, you know, too overcautious in situations like that, right? That was a pivotal moment of, of, uh, <laughs> of, <laughs> <f> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so look, we, we got down to the poo water, and the poo water was only 1.1 degree warmer, and we weren't marking any fish in the, uh, the Congo Rapids there. And we decided, well, we're just going to go back up to where we were. Well, guess what? The wind kicked up even more, and now we had it going against us, and that was 45 minutes of slogging yeah. hell. And to make matters even worse, Joe asked me at one point, well, why aren't you hugging the shoreline where there's no wind? Yeah, we were in like the middle. Like You could have brought <laughs> the Queen Mary through the part of the river that we were, dude, we were such a spectacle that at one point... <laughs> the guy took a picture of us. <laughs> the only other boat on the whole river today was a gigantic, like, 
Tow Boats USA Coast Guard cutter, and the dude passed by and was just like fire. So hey, I, wait, hey, wait. I have to say though that tow boat was towing like a fucking thirty six foot cuddy cabin, and my fourteen foot sea nymph was doing just fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, except except the people in distress in that situation were inside the cabin watching Mori Povich yeah. with a small space heater. Uh, it was miserable. I mean, it's like I'll tell you what. It's been a while since I've been in one in one of them sitches that was that miserable, yeah. and. Um, you know, you get into these things a lot, and and you know the moment it clicks in your head where like whatever the hell we just did has just uh, prematurely made this the end of the day. But here's another one that that uh, dudes with boats will get. Uh, how many times have have you, as the driver of that vessel or your buddy who's driving it, have you been in water where this comes up? Dude, should we slog it out or should I just pick it up and try and get on top of it <laughs> we tried that that was real bad that was real bad yeah that was most of the time i find unless you're in like a 40 foot contender or something yeah. the whole get on top of the shit play it rarely works out it rarely works out so i just it's so funny how like a, uh, you know hey you know shit happens tried some catfishing had yeah. a few laughs turned into just yeah. oh my god Oh my god! We pushed it. We, we, you know, we tried to save the day, and yeah, we tried to save the day. We do, I, and honestly, I don't really know what happened today, other than the fact that I mean, look, look, thirty six degree, thirty eight degrees, forty one degrees. That's one thing, like thirty six. But I am also a firm believer, right? And as you should be too, you go and you can go. Yeah, right? I agree. You go and you can go. That's just that's the the fish gods give you some kind of window in January. And uh, we took it. Yeah. We took it. And, and, you know, this is the thing, man. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm bummed that we didn't catch any fish. Uh, but I, I learned from every single experience. You know, I marked a few spots that I can try next time. And I learned where fish don't seem to be in, in January when the when the water is 36 degrees. I mean, I was here a month ago with uh, with a friend and... You know, yeah, the water was a little warmer, but but holes that you know we tried fishing today were yeah we we marked fish there, but they were just loaded with bait and so you know that was another question of mine is is yeah we we marked some fish today we got some bumps, but for the number of fish in that river those those fish were were somewhere else so at least a bunch of them so I learned why a good dry suit is so expensive yeah <laughs> yeah. But anyway, look, we cannonballed it, and um, probably against our better judgment, yeah. uh, after being up since 1 o'clock this morning. I, I call it more like retreating. I'm thinking I'm, like, retreating. I know, I know. <laughs> no, you know what? Screw it. Let's let the people in. Let's let the people in. Mark, the plan was for Mark and I to crash tonight in D.C., right? Catfish glory, crash, a little night away, go out and get some Mexican. And I feel like, and I've been here... We're, we're on our way home now. We're going to hit every rush hour between yeah. D.C. and Philly because you just want to, like, erase this day from memory. No, I just, I, I'm, you know, I just, I want to, because the other option is getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I just, and I didn't want to, like, settle into, like, I'm just, like, oh, and I, you know what? I would place a wager that the trip from here to your house does not take us more than four hours and 45 minutes i i don't i don't want to place a wager <laughs> you're dying to get home and you're like i don't want to settle in i'm like all i want to do is be settled in right now yeah. settled into a sheraton yeah. hotel um and a hot shower and and washing the frigid off me with one of them tiny little hotel soaps <laughs> <laughs> And the shampoo. And the, and the shampoo. Single serving. Anyway, listen. I, you guys tell me, right? Does this does this work? Like, are you digging this like play by play on the road thing? I'm all about trying new stuff. And Mark and I were coming down here to do this anyway, so I figured, hey, why not? You know, and it's something I think I would definitely do more. Um, does it matter that we didn't catch catfish? I don't know. You know, I was thinking about that all day, and I'll tell you why. Because it's audio, for God's sake, like. So, 
all you missed was us talking about a catfish, <laughs> right? You're not going to see the catfish. So, I know. And I'll tell you another thing, though. One thing I can say, and um, this is my first podcast, and I have no idea who, you know, listens to these because I'm a little bit older and... I don't even really know Older what a pod- Budweiser. I don't really know what a podcast is, but uh, I can tell you this much, this much I know, that if Joe and I had been sitting in a boat on a clear, calm day on a lake in July fishing with bobbers and shiners, it would not have been nearly as interesting as us waking up at 1 o'clock in the morning, breaking ice at the launch... Uh, freezing our off and uh, almost uh, freezing to death, being soaking wet when we kind of tried to push it and make a poor decision to the pool water. So it and, was eventful. And possibly dying from exhaustion uh, on, on the road home. So, hey, these might be, <laughs> these might be um, the last words you hear from me. Nah. Hopefully not. Mark mm-hmm. says no. But, I'm a warrior. Uh, uh, yeah, you, do you like the song, <laughs> Warrior? I, don't, I didn't even know that Shooting song. at the walls of heartache, bang, bang, I am the warrior. Who sings that? Oh, I don't know, dude. It's some eight, 80s jam, uh, some 80s I chick, I'm sure chick I'd, band. I'm sure I'd know it if I heard it. Do you have Spotify? We could look it up. We should just blast it for the next six <laughs> hours so you don't pass your ass out. Anyway, let us know what you think, okay? Hopefully we'll make it home alive. Uh, I will catch you guys right back here in two weeks. And as always, thanks so much for listening to the Hook Shots podcast. Meow.